Hello everyone. Once three priests were discussing the proper positions for prayer and worship, while a telephone repairman worked on his job nearby. One priest said, You know friends, kneeling is definitely the proper way to pray. Another said, No, standing and praying with the hands lifted to heaven is the best way. You are both wrong, the third priest said. The most effective prayer position is lying face down on the floor. Finally, the repairman could not contain himself any longer and he yelled, Hey fathers, the best prayer I ever did was when I was hanging upside down from a telephone pole. Friends, what is the proper way to pray? Standing up, sitting down, kneeling, or lying face down on the floor? Should we close our eyes or keep our eyes open when we pray? Why should we pray? How should we pray? What should we pray for? How long should we pray? Does God even hear us when we pray? These are some of our most frequently asked questions regarding prayer. I believe that today's gospel text can shed some light on these questions. Friends, the apostles certainly knew how to pray because as Jews, they regularly joined in communal prayers in the synagogue and customarily prayed three times, in the morning, in the afternoon and at nightfall each day. Much of Jewish prayer at the time of Jesus was chanting of the scriptures in Hebrew. The apostles must have memorized these prayers and repeated them every day as all the Jews did. Yet, they recognized something new when they saw how Jesus prayed. They must have seen Jesus praying many times in many places and on various occasions. They wanted to learn to pray as he did. So they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. In response, Jesus taught them to pray as he prayed and told them stories to explain how God the Father cares and answers prayers. Friends, the prayer Jesus taught them was simple and direct, which today we call the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father Prayer. The most important aspect of this prayer is to address God as our Father. Jesus wanted his apostles to call God their Heavenly Father. Just as children trust their earthly father to whom they belong, God wants them to know they to belong to him and that he wants only what is good for them and that, secure in his love, they can pray unceasingly to him. Then Jesus instructed them to honor God and his holy name and pray for his kingdom, that is, God's ways and order, to come, and his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, that is, he may bring about his heavenly purpose on earth through us. Finally, Jesus encouraged the apostles to submit themselves fully to God and humbly express their dependence on him for their basic needs and concerns and ask God's forgiveness for their sins. Friends, then Jesus told them a story about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. The story was about a man who at midnight found himself short of food for his guest and went to a neighbor to borrow some bread, even though he had to wake up his friend's entire household. Jesus concluded the parable by saying that the neighbor eventually responded to the man's request not because of their friendship but because of the man's shameless persistence. Friends, Jesus then added something more to describe the need for persistence in prayer. He said that no earthly father would give his child a snake if the child asked for a fish or a scorpion for an egg. The point was that earthly parents do not typically give gifts that would hurt their children or things that are useless to them. 
So Jesus said that if it is so with human beings, with their mixed motives and self-interest, how much more so with God who wants to give his children what is good and life-giving. Friends, through these illustrations, Jesus encouraged the apostles to prevail in prayer without doubting the Father's love. He urged them to ask with perseverance without ever getting tired of asking, especially for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Friends, what can we learn from this Gospel text today? 1. Let us use prayer as a means to converse with and relate to God. 2. Our position or posture during prayer to some extent reflects the spiritual conditions of our inner being. We cannot say that there is any one correct and perfect position for prayer. There are certainly various physical positions which are not meaningless traditions from the time of both the Old and the New Testament, but definite aids for our prayer life. So, let us adopt any position or posture, standing or kneeling or sitting or bowing down, eyes open or eyes closed, hands folded or hands outstretched, that best helps us in worshipping God our Father. 3. Let us pray sincerely and devotedly, and let there be no pretension or hypocrisy in our prayer. Let us give to God all the praise, glory, reverence and honor due to Him, and humbly acknowledge our dependence on Him for our needs. 4. We can use all types and styles of prayer that the Church has made available to us to pray and build our relationship with God. But the best of all prayers, of course, is the Our Father, because it is our Lord Jesus' prayer and it was taught by our Lord Himself. 5. God is never annoyed by our prayers. Let us therefore pray persistently and wait to see how God will respond to us in love. 6. Let us trust in God, who may not always give us what we ask for, but certainly will give us what is good and life-giving for us. Especially, He will give us the Holy Spirit so that we will be able to understand God's purpose of not granting us some of our praise and at the same time the courage to follow His plan. Friends, I would like to leave you with an inspirational expression of an unknown believer's experience of his unanswered prayers. He said, I asked for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for help that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I had asked for, but everything that I had hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am, among all men, most richly blessed. Amen. God bless you.